What's up everyone, here is Akta and welcome back on my YouTube channel for more news on Infinite Magic Raid and today we have the patch note coming for the update coming this Thursday and we have some good news because a lot of heroes are going to be reworked. So uh, let's talk about the patch note in detail. I, as always, I can't show you directly the patch note because it's not official, it's not published. So uh, I'm just going to talk about it and uh, also it is subject to change so maybe if i uh, tell you something in this patch note today maybe tomorrow it's subject to change so um, let's talk about it uh, first of all uh, we are gonna have the specified hero type rate up event uh, for a limited time from february 24th to uh, february 26th you already know about that because nicolas is returning in it but paired with nicolas we are gonna have need rolled gerina barry and slagdo and they are all great heroes especially barry if you get some exclusives on him exclusive three especially same for slagdo uh, he nukes really hard in the arena if you have the third exclusive on him. Gerina is pretty interesting with the first and the last exclusive uh, and need roll you already know about need roll so this is a really really awesome banner and then uh, talk about the epic heroes we are gonna have Rudolf another limited hero uh, with Holder, Anton and Lester. Uh, Holder and Lester are pretty nice early game but uh, they lack damage in end game but Anton is great he is awesome for the force mark tower he is the only hero that can bring a consolidation to your heroes, so he is pretty insane. Also, he can provide a shield, some heals, he can cleanse dots and increase your turn meta. He is awesome. I love him. So, they mentioned that Nicolas and Rudolf return for a limited time and they can only be summoned via Wish during the event. That means after the event, uh, they won't be added to the uh, regular pool. That means you will have to wait until the next uh, event with them inside of it. So, yeah, it kind of sucks in my opinion. It kind of sucks, but I really hope that the majority of you are going to be lucky and summon him. Otherwise, um, I, I, I know the feeling. I know that uh, many players are going to feel bad and this is, this is bad. In my opinion, this is bad. Maybe they should allow us to put some exclusive eye on them, please. If we get one copy of them, let us spend to get some eyes and put them on, uh, on them. It could be better. It could be better for everyone, a better feeling for everyone and also a better income for them. So I don't understand the point. Um, then, second point, uh, another good and bad news, uh, it's mentioned that next week, from February 28th, so it's Tuesday, to uh, Friday, March 2nd, uh, no, it's, an, it's not Friday, it's uh, Thursday, uh, we are going to have another gift of gift of heaven event, during which we will have to summon uh, a set a certain number of uh, excellent and supreme wishes to get a specific reward. Uh, last time we had um, we had Sigmund, but this time we are gonna have a legend phantom dragon eye. So after this Friday, nobody's gonna have an um, a, a supreme and wi excellent wishes anymore. So tell me, how do you uh, think we are gonna uh, try our luck to get this phantom dragon eye? I don't understand the goal. Uh, it should be this Friday. I mean, everybody is gonna have a ton of summons for this Friday to try their luck on Nicholas. So it could be great uh, to put this event on this Friday. So we have maybe enough to get the Phantom Dragon Eye. And <laughs> yeah, for some players, because uh, if you remember, the last event, um, the, the last Gift of Heaven event, we had to summon... Um, 500 excellent wishes at least to get, to get 5,000 points or 50 supreme wishes to get uh, the goal or mix both of them to get the uh, Sigmund copy so yeah it's it's still bad in my opinion but yeah for those who want to spend on this event they would have to spend a ton of uh, excellent and supreme wishes to get the eye so probably only Krakens will have it and I feel like this is just bad because even for Kraken they can buy it directly from the store so I don't understand the point here so then uh, let's talk about the heroes that are going to be uh, buffed uh, this Thursday. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, this Thursday, so we are going to have a fridge. Teru, Amalik, Elbeck, Anna, Eilat, and Olga. So, uh, seven heroes, if I... Yeah, seven heroes. And this is pretty nice because uh, you will be able to regress them for free uh, during uh, this rework. So, it's pretty nice. If you already build them, uh, then you can <laughs> regress them if you don't like them anymore. And uh, switch to another one. Uh, just something you have to take into consideration. If you um, have built them before uh, the rework, then you are going to be able to regress them for free. If you don't have them awaken one before the event starts, then you won't be able to regress them for free. It is really important. So now let's talk about some feature adjustments and then I'm going to talk about the skills of the heroes. So the first one uh, added a wait free refresh to the non-stop combat feature of Arena. So it's pretty nice. Why not for those who are using the non-stop combat feature. Uh, then I added recommended heroes to the elemental city. So uh, it can help. It can help for the people who doesn't know um, what are the recommended heroes to share with your guildmates. Um, optimize the logic of locking heroes. Every time you're going to get a festival exclusive epic heroes, uh, that, then uh, it's automatically going to be locked. Uh, pretty nice, so you won't feed them, feed them anymore in the train uh, building. Then optimize the headlines of exclusive emblem aura and and their sub-interfaces to the corresponding heroes. Okay, doesn't matter. Uh, added the day-night mode in the main city interface. You can switch between them manually in the settings. Why not? Added quick, quick back to the user interfaces. Uh, I don't understand what is what is it. So yeah, okay. And finally, optimize the icon of the hero tag control. Okay, nothing huge. So now let's talk about the skill adjustments. And first of all, I would like to talk about um, Anna in the Wise Lord's Eye. So, uh, basic attack at the moment, she does 200% attack damage to a single enemy with a 40 to 80% chance to inflict a burn for, burn for two turns. Uh, now she is going to have up to 100% chance to inflict the, the layer of burn. Okay, so it's pretty awesome because a burn on a basic attack, uh, almost guaranteed, is huge. And now, Fire Strike. Uh, this is the second skill. So at the moment, deals 200% attack damage to a target and two random enemies with a 60 to 90% chance to inflict a layer of burn on them for two turns. And now... Uh, she's gonna deal the same amount of damage to uh, the same number of enemies, but she will have 100% chance to inflict the layer of burn. So one more time, it's awesome. So you are sure almost if you have the enough effect hit on her and you won't need a lot in order to land the debuff because 100% is great. Uh, so yeah, this is pretty nice. Now let's talk about her passive. At the moment, she gains some extra burn damage. Whenever she inflicts one layer of burn successfully, stackable up to 10 layers. Uh, Anna gains 40% speed for two turns when she detonates burn or deals detonation damage. Uh, this is pretty interesting. So normally you can have up to 3% uh, burn damage bonus um, 10 times. So 30% uh, burn damage bonus in total. And it's going to be increased to 5% for each. Uh, layers here, so up to 50%, which is pretty interesting, pretty nice. She's gonna deal a lot of damage thanks to that. Um, stackable up to 10 layers, and she is still gonna get the 40% speed bonus after she detonates burn or deals detonation damage, pretty nice. Now let's talk about her first exclusive at the moment. A fire strike, um, it's gonna, oh, a fire strike is gonna attack all enemies now. And it's going to be the same, but uh, after uh, the skill is going to be cast, uh, she is going to increase the attack of all allies by 40%. This is insane. Oh, I love that. So, you will be able to use her with your other daughters, uh, So because she's going to increase their attack. And same for the direct damage. 40% is a huge on a second skill. Uh, how much turns does she have in cooldown? Three turns. This is insane. I love that. Uh, second exclusive. Oh, it's completely changed. 
Uh, before on the second exclusive, you you would increase your dot uh, deal by all allies by 20% when she survives. Now it's completely changed. Increases the effect of fire wave. Fire wave. What is fire wave? Fire wave. Fire wave. Okay, it's that. Okay, the the burn damage buff on her. Increase the effect by 100%. Which will not be removed at wave transition. Pretty nice for dungeon. Uh, meanwhile, increases the burn damage dealt by all allies by 30% when she survives. Oh, okay. So definitely she will be insane in a burn team. At the moment, if you use a burn team properly with uh, Eric, Barry, and if you put her inside, you are gonna destroy enemies with your burn. She will get... 100% burn damage bonus <laughs> during the fight. It's gonna be insane. And also your allies will have 30% more burn damage, which is insane. So, exclusive 3 is getting a buff. Uh, okay, it's co it completely changed. And at the moment, inflicts one layer of burns on enemies' targets without a burn on them for two turns and deals 100% more attack damage for the detonation damage for targets with burn. Uh, this is the ultimate. Now it's going to increase the detonation damage deal by Phoenix Dance by 120%. Okay, so she's going to deal more damage using that. After which, there is a 100% chance to inflict one layer of burn on all enemies for two turns. Let's have a look. At the moment, she deals 100% attack damage and 200% attack detonation damage to all enemies. So, uh, it's gonna be increased. It's gonna be increased. And she will inflict a burn. So it's a better one. Pretty nice, pretty nice. So, she's gonna be insane in my opinion. Especially if you use her in a, uh, in a dot team with a burns, uh, burn impact in particular, uh, or a bleed, uh, poisons, uh, this is gonna be great. So next one is Olga. In my opinion, she was already decent in the arena, but she was lacking some damage in PvE, so let's have a look to her next kit. So let's talk about the basic attack at the moment. She deals the 220% attack damage to a single enemy. If the target has an attribute debuff, additionally increases 25% damage from the attack. If the target is under control status, uh, the damage are increased by 50% instead, which is pretty nice. So, uh, it's gonna be uh, changed. And um, now, uh, when she is full skilled up, normally uh, you could have 300% attack damage. Now it's gonna be increased to 360% attack damage to a single enemy. Okay, so it's just a buff on her damage on her basic attack. And uh, trust me, 360% is great. You don't have many heroes in the game at the moment who has uh, such a high coefficient on the basic attack. And also, if the enemy has an attribute debuff on them, it, it's gonna be increased by 25%, and it, could be in, it can be interesting for the guild boss. Because you can in lower his defense, it's an attribute debuff. Feebleness in, is an attribute debuff also, so she's gonna deal more damage to the boss using that. And in PvP, with heroes with control status, you are gonna increase a lot of your damage, so probably now it's gonna be uh, nice to use her. Uh, let's talk about her passive uh, skill here. Olga takes 25% less da direct damage when she at is attacked by heroes with a countered mark. This is a skill that is going to be used for the, the arena, I think. And she is going to have 18% to... Um, how much? Um, 18% to 35% chance at the moment with this skill to push you and attack one time after an ally cast a skill that deal damage proactively. Uh, this is great. This is great. Because now she is gonna have up to 100% chance to push you and attack after an ally cast skills that deal damage proactively. So that means not a basic attack and not the pursuit of Ben Austin or the counter attack of Catherine. So yeah, 100% chance to pursue the target. So you are sure to increase your damage. She's gonna be insane just thanks to this passive. And the increase of attack damage on the basic attack. This is great. But 
And let's talk about Light Forged Arrow. So this is the ultimate. At the moment, it deals four stages of 100% attack damage each to a single enemy. The first three stages of attack reduce the target's turn meta by 15% each, and the fourth stage inflicts silence for one turn. So it's interesting at the moment. But now she will deal up to 180% attack damage instead of 145% uh, with the skill ups. And the first three stages, okay, it's, it's still gonna do the same, so it's just a buff in damage. Pretty nice. So now let's talk about her exclusive. The first is gonna remain the same, but the second one is gonna be uh, changed. Olga deals 20% more direct damage to Eternal Sect and Doom Legion enemies. So now it's gonna be buffed to uh, 35% instead. Pretty nice. To the Forgotten Eternal Sect. They added the Forgotten inside here. Pretty nice. Okay. And the enemies takes 20% uh, less direct damage from them. Okay, she's gonna take 20% less direct damage from uh, Doom Legion, Eternal Sect, and now also the Forgotten, but it's gonna be increased to 25% uh, instead, which is pretty insane. So she's gonna be better in the arena for sure. And the same is, uh, the same remain the same. The the uh, the, uh, the other uh, skills and exclusive remain the same after that. Okay, so let's talk about the next one. It is gonna be Elbeck. Uh, in my opinion, he was decent, but he was lacking some uh, stuff maybe for the team to support them. So let's have a look to his kit. Basic attack. Um, at the moment, he deals some damage based on his max HP to the uh, to the enemy, and then he's gonna get some layers of Desert Soul, and every uh, layers of uh, this unique buff is gonna increase his max HP, and he can get a huge amount of max HP thanks to this kind of buff. So let's talk about it. Um, okay, so basic attack, he's gonna deal uh, up to 26% of his max HP in damage using the basic attack instead of 18% before. It's a huge buff because he was already doing a great amount of damage using the basic attack. Um, you can watch my videos uh, about him. It is insane at the moment. And now it is gonna be buffed, but a lot. So he's, he, just for that, he's gonna be insane. Uh, so. Afterwards, uh, okay, the, uh, the next thing on his basic attack is uh, gonna remain the same. So it's just uh, an attack bonus on his basic attack, pretty nice. Active skill, soul guard, here, uh, grants all ally shield by 25% of his max HP for two turns. Then, <laughs> the shield is gonna be increased to 35% of his max HP. I mean, thanks to his unique buff here, uh, with 500k HP on him, mine uh, could have uh, up to 1,300,000k HP, so a 25% uh, shield is um, was insane, and now it's gonna be buffed to 35%. His shield is gonna be insane, he will have the best shield in the game, f f and it's gonna be far from the other shields. This is insane, he's gonna be an insane hero. Okay, so let's talk about... Oh, they buffed the damage on his ultimate! What the fuck? If you saw my videos, he was hitting super hard using the, the ultimate, thanks to his uh, buff in uh, HP. Uh, he was... He had a 45% damage based on his max HP before the buff. Now he is gonna have up to 54% of his max HP. This is gonna be insane. You know what? I'm gonna build him again. I'm a 100% also because I have the first exclusive. Now I'm gonna build him again. And they are gonna buff only the third exclusive on him. So if we have a look to this third exclusive at the moment, uh, he is gonna be he is gonna gain death domain. What is death domain? Uh, gains death domain for two turns after casting that, during which the layer of desert soul obtained by casting uh, the second skill, uh, the, the 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 ultimate soul draining. Uh, no, it's the basic attack. Okay, every time he casts the basic attack, uh, the chance uh, the layers of desert soul he's gonna get are gonna be doubled. Uh, it, the num the duration is gonna be increased from two to three turns. So pretty nice, and it's not gonna be doubled but tripled. So he's gonna be insane now. He is gonna buff himself super fast. 
thanks to the buff with the third exclusive. So it's gonna be an insane hero. The buffs are great. The buffs are great so far. I love that. So now let's talk about Teru. Uh, this is Teru, so a basic attack. At the moment on the basic attack, he deals some damage uh, by a certain percentage of his max HP, uh, up to 12% uh, max HP in damage. Now it's gonna be doubled. Up, he's gonna deal up to 24% of his max HP and this is great. He is gonna be a, a good damage dealer with a basic attack if he has a lot of HP. Nice. Also, he's gonna have some chance to inflict intertwined for two turns. But it's not gonna be a huge buff. Uh, at the moment with the basic attack you have up to 30% chance to inflict intertwine for 2 turns on a single target and it's gonna be buffed by 5% only so you are gonna be have 35% chance to inflict in, in, instead so pretty nice but it's not gonna change a, a lot of things uh, giant tree shield so it's uh, this skill Grants all allies consolidation 1 and 1 layer of heal for 2 turns, uh, it's remained the same. But the skill cooldowns is gonna change. At the moment you have up to f uh, 4 uh, turns in cooldown, it's gonna be lowered to 3 turns. So you will have the buffs uh, more often during the fight, this is a good buff. Uh, passive skill, let's talk about that. At the moment, the heal granted by Teru additionally restores HP by th up to 3%. It's gonna remain the same. Yeah, it still returns 3% of max HP. Uh, I don't understand that. Okay, well, why not? Why not? Uh, Teru grants all allies a shield by... <laughs> okay. Uh, at the moment, you, you have only a 5% of max HP uh, shield for all allies when the enemy target is inflicted with stun. Now, he is going to provide your team a 22% of his max HP in shield, and this is going to be insane. You can have just one shield at once, okay, it's it's uh, normal, but 22% instead of 5% is a huge buff. And also they added something, uh, the repeatedly obtained shield granted by this effect will reset the, the shield value and its duration. So, uh, if you have the buff on your heroes, if you have a 20% uh, shield, uh, if you take some damage on the shield, then if you stun another enemy uh, thanks to intertwined, uh, you are going to reset the shield and the duration uh, to the maximum, uh, this is insane. The, uh, the passive of this hero is going to be insane now, I love that. Let's talk about this is his ultimate. At the moment there is a 70% chance to inflict intertwined on all enemies for 2 turns, it's going to be buffed to 80%. And afterwards, it deals damage to all enemies by 12% to Teru's max HP, it's gonna be buffed to uh, 20%, pretty nice. An AoE attack based on his max HP, 20% uh, is nice. And also, the more targets with Intertwined, the higher the damage dealt by this skill, up to 16% before to 30% after of his max HP. It cannot, be land, it cannot land a crit, but 30% is gonna be great. So he is gonna deal massive damage using his ultimate. Uh, let's talk about his exclusive. The first one is gonna have a buff. Giant tree shield, so it's the uh, giant tree shield, let me have a look. It's the second skill. Uh, giant tree shield additionally grants all allies. Yeah, they listen to me. They listen to me. Uh, this is awesome. So now he's not gonna be selfish anymore. He's gonna grant all the light the consolidation too, and the shield uh, is gonna be increased from 15% to 20% during two turns for all the lies. Yeah, this is a great exclusive, and this is logic. I love that. Uh, second exclusive. At the moment, it's, got, it's gonna be completely changed. At the moment, restores self HP by 44% of max HP whenever an enemy target is inflicted with intertwined. Okay, why not? And now, restores all allies HP by 3% of his max HP 
when an enemy is inflicted with intertwined. So he's gonna provide consolidation too, which is awesome. He's gonna heal a lot your heroes and he's gonna provide a huge amount of shields and deal a lot of damage. This hero is gonna be insane. He's gonna be great. Finally, a great support for the blue mark. He is great. I love that. All heroes are getting a huge buff. This is insane. I love that. But it's not all. Let's talk about Eilat. Yeah, because Eilat is also getting a buff. So, uh, at the moment, basic attack. She deals two stages of damage. Uh, uh, at the moment, each by 100% of her death damage. Oh, she's gonna hit now, uh, depending on her max HP. 8% of her max HP to a single target with a 40% chance to reduce the effect hit. Uh, okay, okay, okay. I want to tell something about that. Uh, it's only 8% of her max HP, okay? Uh, let's talk about uh, Teru before. I uh, told that he, uh, he, would, he would deal up to 24% of his max HP, Why a lot is gonna hit only by 8% uh, of her max HP. Uh, Ailbeck is also getting a buff on the basic attack, so he's going to deal way more damage than that. What is the point? 8% of her max HP is not sufficient. Okay, but uh, bef before uh, before getting angry about that, uh, let's talk about uh, the the, uh, the other skills. Uh, active skill Sanctuary Shield, so it's probably this one, yeah. Uh, before it was increasing the defense of all heroes by a sixty percent. Uh, oh, yeah, why? What the f- Oh, this is just insane! Instead of increasing the defense by 60%, she is gonna increase the HP of all heroes by 50% for two turns. With a three turns cooldown. <laughs> Instead of a four turn cooldown. She's gonna be insane with that. In this faction, you have many HP burning heroes. So it's gonna be insane to use her in this faction, and also in dungeon, he's, this is gonna be insane. Okay, so... 50% more HP on her, so yeah, 8% damage uh, based on her HP on the basic attack is great. <laughs> Let's talk about the ulti- no, it's not the ultimate, it's the, the passive. At the moment, she has some uh, reflect damage, it's gonna be increased, she could have up to 44% damage reflect before, and now it's gonna be increased to 52%. Why not? Okay, so more reflection damage. Let's talk about her ultimate now. Before, she could deal up to 420% death damage on the enemy. Now she... Oh, wow. She's gonna deal up to 42% of her max HP in damage to a single enemy and inflicts provoke. You don't need effect hit to inflict the provoke. And she is gonna still have the same. The leech and the damage reflection buff after that is gonna remain the same. Oh, she's gonna be great. And let's talk about her exclusive. Okay, they listened to me on this one. They decided to buff the shield from 20% to 30% of her max HP on her first exclusive. This is great. Uh, second exclusive. Before, she had a 30% chance to counterattack when taking direct damage. Da direct damage and now she will have a 50% chance to counterattack. So it's better. Um, and it is... Guaranteed to counterattack if the t attacker's HP is below 30% HP before and now uh, it's gonna be triggered if the target that inflicts some attack to Eilat have a 50, um, a below 50% HP instead. Uh, from 30% to 50% so it's pretty nice. It's gonna be triggered more often. And also something is added, can be stacked with the buff counterattack. Yeah, they also listen to me on that point and this is gonna be great. This is gonna be great. Because remember, with the basic attack, she has some chance to s provoke the target. So now she will have two, chance, two chances to s provoke the target with the counter-attack. And let's talk about the third exclusive. Uh, okay, for you smash, uh, what skill is that? The ultimate, still the ultimate, okay. So the ultimate... Increases the damage by 40% to 100% before, and now it's gonna be to, from 60% to 120% based 
on the target's lost HP and slashes the target directly if he is he if he is below not 20% but 25% HP now after dealing damage. This is gonna be great because she is gonna deal a huge amount of damage based on her max HP using the ultimate. Awesome, I love that. <laughs> All heroes are getting a huge buff. Eilat is gonna be insane. So let's talk about the next one. It is gonna be Fritch. And trust me, before before talking about the buff, I just want to mention the second skill because at the moment um, it's the best hero in the game to break the damage of enemies uh, thanks to the attack down and the crit down on enemies. So let's, but the other kits uh, are, is, are not great at the moment. So let's talk about him. A basic attack. At the moment, um, basic attack deals. Uh, up to 110% damage, death damage to the enemy is going to be buffed to 120% uh, instead with a 30% chance to inflict a provoke for one turn it's going to be up to 40% instead of 30 and this is all for the basic attack so it's not going to be a huge basic attack but wait to see the next uh, the next part of the buff uh, hammer of rampage okay second skill before uh, he could deal up to 160% death damage to all enemies and it's a nerf for the damage from 160% to 120% death damage to all enemies but you will have more chance to reduce their attack and to reduce their crit damage from up to 50% to 70% chance to reduce the attack and the crit damage by 60%. So I don't care about the damage personally because uh, increasing the, the chance to land the debuff from 50% to 70% is a huge buff in my opinion. He is gonna require way less effect hit to land this debuff and so he's gonna be insane for dungeons and for PvP maybe against the team that deal a lot of damage. Uh, let's talk about the passive. Completely changed. At the moment, restores self HP by 4% of max HP, increases the, his self turn meter by 10% when, ta when taking crit damage. It wasn't working because a heal hour. Okay, yeah, no, it's, it, it was working, sorry, I, I said nothing. It was interesting but not great. So now let's have a look. Reduces self attack all damage received by up to 60%. <laughs> he will never die. All sources of damage are gonna inflict 60% less damage on himself. Meanwhile, each time Fritch is gonna take direct damage, he's gonna restore his own max HP by 40%, by 4%, 4%, sorry, and grants self one layer of overwhelming anger. This is a unique, a new unique buff. Each of which increases self at all damage received by 10%. Why? What? Okay. Every time he's gonna take some damage, he is gonna get a buff that increases the damage he's gonna receive up to one, uh, up to 15 layers. That means every time he's gonna be hit, he is gonna get up to 150% damage increase on him. Okay, no. Uh, he is gonna remove four layers of overwhelming anger at the beginning of each turn. <laughs> okay, I don't understand. I don't understand. There is no point doing that. Just reduce his damage and it's okay. Uh, maybe uh, reduce his damage by 40% if you think that it is too broken, but I mean, if you take, I don't know how it is going to work. Every time he's going to receive direct damage, that means maybe heroes with multiple stages of attack with one skill is going to trigger multiple times this. And so in fact, just take a Margarita, uh, how many stages of attack, maybe six at once? 
So he, he is gonna lose his damage reduction on the passive right after Margarita attacks. Okay. At least she's gonna he's gonna uh, survive Margarita. But yeah, I don't understand that. So active skill fury. It's uh he's there is no skill called fury. Uh, this is the ultimate, okay? I'm pretty sure this is the ultimate. Before, he grants a self-taunt and shield by 40% of max HP for 2 turns. And after, he's gonna inflict a taunt on self for 2 turns. Uh, okay, so it, the, the taunt remain the same. Uh, and he's gonna restore all allies HP by 18% of his max HP, of max HP. Okay, it's uh, not his own max HP, but the hero's max HP. And grants them a shield by 15% of his max HP for 2 turns. Uh, okay, so before he was granting only himself a shield and now it's gonna be a shield for all allies for 2 turns. So before he was a selfish and now it's gonna be uh, useful. Why not? Uh, let's talk about the first exclusive. Uh, completely changed. Before, uh, Hammer of Rampage has the same chance to reduce all enemies crit damage by 60% for 2 turns. Uh, okay, he needed okay um, he needed this he, the first exclusive to allow the crit damage of enemies and now uh, it's gonna be changed reduces all enemies turn meta by fifteen percent or reduces all enemies turn meta by twenty five percent when successfully reducing their attack. Uh, let me check. Let me check something. Let me check something because I missed something. Uh, hammer of rampage Okay Before okay, okay before he needed the first exclusive to lower the crit damage of enemies by uh, 60% and now he is gonna I I reduce it without exclusive and with the first one he is also gonna reduce the turn meta of enemies Up to 25% This is gonna be great This is gonna be great And uh, yeah, up to 25%. This is gonna be great. So let's talk about his second exclusive. Excuse me, because I just bugged one, uh, <laughs> a bit, uh, so I'm sorry about that. Uh, so, also, on his second exclusive, completely changed. Uh, okay, at the moment, Fridge increases self turn meta by 5% when an ally takes crit damage. And each attack can only trigger this effect up to once, okay? And now, at the beginning of each turn, he removes all layers of overwhelming anger on him, and each of which increases itself all damage received by 7% now. What? Before it was 10% and now it's gonna be 7%. Okay, okay, so... Uh, he will survive better. So the second exclusive is gonna counter the damage he's gonna inflict to himself using the second, uh, using his skill, his passive. So wait, yeah, why not? So third exclusive also completely changed. At the moment, grants a rest debuff for one turn and increases his damage reflect by thirty percent for two turns. But it was selfish because it was only for himself. And now using um, a Fury, so he's ultimate, he's gonna remove all debuffs from self and grant a self rest debuff for two turns before restoring HP. Besides, the value of the shield granted by uh, this skill is gonna be increased and it's gonna be doubled for the allies. Uh, why rest debuff is only for himself? I mean, it could be interesting to put this buff to all the lies instead. So he's gonna be interesting, but not maybe not broken as other heroes. So now let's talk about the last one. I think this is the last one and it's Amalik. So uh, active skill smite, uh, maybe the basic attack. No, uh, it's the second skill. Uh, it's gonna, uh, at the moment he deals 
140% attack damage with this skill is going to be buffed to 220% attack damage uh, and reduce the turn meta of the target by 50% at the moment up to 75% now after the buff. Uh, with the chance to free the target, 100% chance, so it remains the same. Uh, passive skill. Um, at the moment, uh, each stage of Amalek's damage inflicts one layer of sword, sword aura and removes all layers of sword aura on the target who has three layers of sword aura. Okay, after afterward, there is a hundred percent chance to inflict a freeze on them for one turn. And they added Amalek is guaranteed to launch a crit to target under freeze status. This is insane. He's gonna deal a huge amount of damage because every time an enemy is gonna have a freeze on him, he's gonna land a crit. He doesn't need the aura to uh, increase his crit rate on freeze enemies anymore. Oh, I love that. Let's talk about the other skill, clean sweep. Okay, the ultimate. Before he deals 100% damage to all enemies, it's gonna be doubled to 200%. This is the only thing, okay? This is the only thing. But he has a crit guaranteed if enemies are frozen. Oh, okay. And they just change his third exclusive. Uh, the, f the ultimate uh, was dealing an additional uh, stage of attack by 100% of his attack in damage. And now it's going to be buffed to 140%. Or 280% attack damage to targets under free status. <laughs> he is gonna nuke hard with the third exclusive on his ultimate on targets with a freeze. So it's a damage buff only. So he's gonna be interesting after that. And this is all for the buff. Tell me what do you think about that in the comment below. I think uh, now these all these heroes deserve to be built. They are going to be insane after that. Tell me what do you think about that in the comment below. I hope you enjoyed the video. If it's the case, as usual, please like, comment, and subscribe, and then see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Infinite Magic Raid. Play to slay.